It's Wednesday night. It's a very cold Wednesday night. Um, cold isn't even a cold enough word for tonight. It is so cold. I have a little dog, Lucy, who just does not want to go outside at all. We keep trying to force her. In fact, I had to put her harness on and a leash and walk outside and stand down the, out in the weather with her to make her go outside. So uh, it's just too cold for man or beast or women or dogs. So it's just too cold outside. Hopefully you're inside warm and cozy. Hopefully you're in something um, to keep you toasty during this terrible weather. But uh, uh, it is a cold Wednesday night. So I don't even know how many of you will jump on with me tonight. I'm waiting to kind of see if somebody shows up. Well, hey, there's a few popping on. So tonight I wanna talk about a couple of different things. Man, I thought about Helen, she has to be up where it's really cold uh, and um, the snow and the drifting and the wind. The wind is what is horrific. In fact, I have a very, very heavy metal table outside and it keeps rattling that which it's hard to even lift and move, and yet the wind is rattling it. So it's just not a good night to be out at all. So I'm glad you're inside and warm and toasty tonight. It's been a busy day, a busy week, week so far, but it's always great to stop right in the middle of our week and just get, get reconnected again. Just spend those few minutes. Um, so I'm glad, Helen, I'm glad all is well, even though the wind is crazy, that's what I'm saying. Um, I tried to do a little something with my hair and it's like, just give it up. Just, I mean, it's been wind whipped and I don't know. So tonight we're just going to jump into a couple things. I want to talk to you a little bit about tonight something, but let's ask the Lord first to, to open our hearts and just prepare us to hear from his word tonight. And we'll see if others might join us or some folks I know are crazy busy schedules. So they'll tune in later and watch us later on. So Heavenly Father, we just ask that you would be with us tonight as we just open our hearts again, searching for a nugget of truth from your word, an encouragement, a challenge, and we give you thanks for the fact that you do that to it for us. Uh, Father, I pray for those right now, we have a number of families who have lost loved ones recently and just need your comfort and your help. We ask that you continue to minister to those families. Uh, we've still got some folks out with the crud. And so we ask that you would uh, touch their bodies and give them strength and wellness again. And Father, just keep our people safe and warm, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, some of you have jumped on. Uh, yeah, Lucy is sending a message to Sunny just saying, it is way too cold out there. Don't even think that they can make us go out there. That's what she's saying. So that's where it's at. But tonight I want to talk to you a little bit about something that probably all of you have in your home. You have it somewhere and you probably use it at least sometimes or at least you used to use it if you've given it up but it's called an alarm clock it's called an alarm clock and there's different kinds of alarm clocks now they make them where you can actually set them to come on slowly and you can have it change colors lightly and slowly and make gentle sounds and do things so that they don't wake you up you know abruptly or be jarring i personally can't handle jarring alarm clocks you know the kind that just shock you straight out of bed i'm a light sleeper and so my alarm clock is is fairly gentle in fact it starts with just one little beep and then it waits a little bit and goes a little beep 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 it just goes gently and i usually catch it on beep the very first beep a very light beep that's all i need and shut it off quickly because i don't like that loud sound at night but there's there's all kinds of different kinds of alarm clocks and what is the purpose of alarm clocks well for a lot of us it used to be that would get you up in the morning to get you to work on time some of you are still that way and you get at a very certain time time enough to shower and dress and get ready oh wait that's my whole alarm clock did you hear the first little beep i heard the first beep and then it starts going to two beeps it gets a little bit more adamant but that's still a fairly decent sound it's not too gigantic and then it then it starts going to more more beeps and that's about as wild as it gets until I reach over usually with one beep and shut it off. It's an alarm clock. 
It's something pretty simple and easy to use. Uh, gets us to work, gets us to appointments on time. Uh, you know, there's different ways that we use alarm clocks and reason, but mainly is to tell us so that we're not late. To tell us when to get ready to get up or to get ready or get to an appointment to make sure we're not late or to work or to something else. So uh, that, that tiny little one, um, you know, I have a hard time in the store. They sell you alarm clocks and they're in a box or in a case and I need to hear what it's going to sound like. Helen, I'm with you. I, I've tried to buy different ones, but uh, boy, sometimes the alarm is just more jarring than I can handle. It doesn't take a lot. I do have a sister. Yes, I many of you know Joyce, and Joyce pretty much can sleep if a Mack truck comes through the house. If we're in a tornado, if the volcano blows, she would probably still be asleep. So she has a much more jarring alarm clock, and it has to be rather insistent, and she has to like hit the snooze numerous times before she'll really literally get out of the bed. That's Joyce, not me, that's Joyce. But that's some of you maybe have to have a much rougher alarm clock to get up in the morning. Uh, some of us have little dogs that wake us up and that's a very squirmy little alarm clock. I am so thankful that I have one that just sleeps on. And if I left her, she would be there still in the bed asleep halfway through the day if I didn't get her up and get her out myself. So she is a pretty easy dog, I have to say. Lucy's pretty good about that. Well, what does that have to do with God's word? Actually, what, what I want to talk to you about is Jesus has given us a promise in the Bible. And he says he's going to gather deliverers. He's going to bring them to live with him in heaven. We call it the rapture. The rapture is the word we use that says he will gather up those who are his believers. Those who believe he is God's son, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he rose again, that he's preparing a place for us. And that's what he says he has promised for us. When? When? Wouldn't it be really great if if we had, like he gave each of us when we became a Christian, like a little special alarm clock, and it would beep when it's time for him to call us to heaven. Well, we don't get that clock. There, there's several things that can happen. One is it's appointed unto all of us at some point to die, and we may die, and at that point we'll go to live with the Lord. We don't know when that is. We're not guaranteed a tomorrow. We have no alarm clocks to tell us that. And sometimes we're shocked when people pass early or unexpectedly. And sometimes we think we have it figured out. And I remember rushing home and um, afraid my, my mother... Oh my word. Oh, that's this alarm clock. This is one. Okay, that's one I played for you just so you could hear it. This is for looks only. I cannot bear this in the morning. I cannot wake up to that sound. Okay, I think we're about done with alarm clocks, but I'm reminding you that we're either going to pass from this life or we're going to go in the rapture. I'm hoping for the rapture, and I hope that comes soon, that he calls us to heaven. Oh, Joyce. Oh. Joyce's, Joyce's phone alarm is going off. Joyce, turn it off. Okay. Turn it off. Okay. okay. Good grief. Well, wouldn't it be great? Because there's people who say, I want to live my own life and live it the way I want. And I don't want to have to, you know, change my ways. I don't want to give up certain things. I'll deal with God and make things right with him at the last minute. That is if they had an alarm clock. To know when that last minute is. I don't know. I didn't get an alarm clock of whether I'm either going to die or whether he's going to call us to heaven. I don't have that kind of alarm clock. Mark chapter 13, verses 32 to 37 helps explain this a little. Let me read it. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son. Jesus doesn't even know, but only the father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned tasks, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. 
Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Well, what does that mean? It means we need to live our life ready to go to heaven. If I get run over by a truck, if I fall, uh, fall, uh, fall asleep and die in the bed, if I don't know. I don't have an alarm clock to tell me when. So I need to live my life ready every day. I don't know when he's going to call us to heaven in the rapture. That could happen in an instant. That could happen before I finish talking to you tonight. We don't know. Now, we don't live in fear over that. He just says, don't be afraid. Just watch and be ready. So I need to be in the Bible. I need to be in the word. I need to know what it says and try to act right the best I can to, to live the way God would want me to live. So I'm ready to go whenever I go. Recently, someone passed and, and there was such great concern like, do they know Jesus yet? And I'm thinking, oh, we've got to talk to people if we're concerned about that. We've got to talk to them now because we don't have an alarm clock to tell us when they're not going to be there to talk to anymore. Is there someone you know? Or is there something in your heart that you need to get right with God now? Like right now. Uh, you're at home. You can ask God to forgive you in this moment. What's amazing to me is instantaneously God says, you turn towards me. You ask my forgiveness and I am faithful and just. I will forgive you instantly. Wipe that sin away and have a clean heart. So you can do that while I'm talking to you right now. You may have someone's name just kind of come on your heart and go, ooh, I just don't know that they're ready. And what if, what if something happens tonight? What if something happens tomorrow? I've got to have a plan to begin to talk to people who don't know Jesus, who don't have a relationship with him, more than just knowing about him, but knowing him. And I mean, talking to him, hearing from him. They've confessed their sins. They love him. They're growing to know him more. They're on that journey of life with holding his hand with the Lord in control. That's what we need to have in people so that we're ready. So that at any moment, whenever an alarm goes off and wow, I don't know if I have any more ready to go off. I think all of mine at the house have gone off that I set. I'm just kind of waiting. You know, that's how we live just kind of waiting. I'm going to move on. I can't just sit around and wait for the alarm to go off. I can't just sit around and wait to die. I can't just sit around and wait for the rapture. I have to continue to live, but I have to live right. And I need to tell others so they're ready. That's how we watch, watch for him to come. Well, that's my reminder tonight. I wanted to just remind you all of what those alarm cocks are like. And nope, we don't get one from God. We just have to live ready and be watching for him to come. I'll see you Sunday, 10 o'clock. Sunday at 10 o'clock for the kids and the youth. 10.30 for the adults. And this Sunday is BGMC. So bring all your coins. Gather them. Look around the washing machine. Look in all the places and the little places where you throw your coins. Dig in your purse. Get them all ready to go. Throw them in a baggie. Whatever. Bring them Sunday. We're starting on this new project now, we took some in January. I'm going to tell you Sunday what the new project is we'll be supporting, reaching kids around the world. And I'll tell you what country and where we're going to be praying for for the whole year of 2023 with our BGMC, Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge. That's what it stands for, with those coins. See you Sunday and next Wednesday again at 645. Uh, if you have to go to work tomorrow, don't forget to set your alarm.